Safety first. Please start the podcast before driving and do not interact with your phone while operating your vehicle. Welcome to Impactful Dialogues, an Ecolab podcast elevating inclusion, mindfulness, purpose, awareness, collaboration, and trust through executive conversation. I'm your host, Vice President of Global Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Dexter Davis. Well, welcome to the second episode of Impactful Dialogues. Um, today, I will be speaking with Jen Bradway, Senior Vice President, Corporate Controller, about fostering inclusive team dynamics. Um, and Jen is also executive sponsor of our Women's ERG E3. So really excited, excited to have this conversation with you, Jen. So first, welcome, and also welcome to all who are listening today. Thank you. Happy to be here. Good, good. Well, I first want to just talk a little bit um, um, as we think about inclusive leadership, inclusive teams. It's always good to hear people's journey to kind of get what they're at and kind of how they really was able to leverage something like that to become the area they're at today. Um, So first question I would like to have for you, Jen, is you've been with the company for 12 years and have risen from an operations controller to an SVP corporate controller. What factors do you credit for your success as you progress throughout your career? particularly in the historically male-dominated field of finance? Uh, Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, one that I I don't reflect on too often, Um, but I think it's important to um, first say that, you know, I really honed my craft. Um, in other words, like I'm, I'm good at what I do, which which may sound vain, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. but I've worked really hard um, to get where I am. And I think it's important for people to know that to be successful, you have to be good at what you do first mm-hmm. and foremost. Um, but I would also say that I had to be open to feedback. Um, in Mm -hmm. creating that expertise that I have. I had to ask for feedback, listen to it, and then adjust accordingly, which can be really hard um, sometimes. Feedback can be be hard to hear. Um, But then, you know, so I did kind of, I controlled what I could control on that side. And then from there, I would say I had amazing sponsors. You know, people who were willing to advocate for me behind closed doors, um, give me the feedback I needed, um, and help sort of open new doors um, for me as I move forward. So that those leaders that were sponsors for me were a huge part of my success as well. That's awesome. Awesome. Hey, in, in thinking about that, Jen, um, it makes me think about what kind of advice would you give to somebody a woman coming into our organization, pretty male dominated organization. We're getting better. We're, we're trying yeah. to make progress. We're getting better. <laughs> what advice would you give to that person coming in there, especially given in a, in a field like finance or, or within our businesses where they may not see many of other women in more senior leader positions? What advice would you give them as they come into the organization? Yeah, I think maybe a couple things. Um, one, be you. Um, and, and that took me a while to figure that out. Um, you know, I tried to do certain things to fit in, um, perhaps in ways that weren't exactly, you know, who I am naturally. And mm-hmm. what I found was that more success came, the more I was who I naturally am, because yeah. it's just, it's just easier, obviously, mm-hmm. um, to, to be who you are. And that, that doesn't mean, um, you know, creating a lot of waves or, or, you know, pushing on things that shouldn't, you know, be pushed on, but it, mm-hmm. it just means that you're able to come and spend your time and energy bringing your good ideas Um, Mm -hmm. and execution and all of those things without having to spend time and energy on being someone you're not. So I think, Mm -hmm. I think that's first and foremost, what I would tell people. Um, And then also find your tribe. So if you are, um, you know, in the organization and you're doing good work and you're working with good colleagues and all of those things, but you just, you're looking for um, a sense of belonging that somehow is missing from the area that you're in, fi- find a tribe. And and mm-hmm. sometimes that can come through our ERGs. Um, sometimes that can come through just networking and you'll eventually find some people who you really click with. But I think it's important to find those people in the organization that can be a community for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can put down roots. Um, yes. To be honest, I when I joined Ecolab, I thought I would be here for three years um, <laughs> and then do something else. And here I am 12 years later, um, having really found a good home um, mm-hmm. for, for the work that I do. So that's been really important for me. That That is a really good point. And I love how you said about bringing your authentic self and being able to do that. And I think 
especially we talk about, I talk a lot about how important we want to create an environment where people feel confident bringing an authentic self to work. But yeah. I love how you talked about that's a journey. And I would agree with mm-hmm. you. It took a long time. And you still have the impact. You still have things that make it hard from day to day. And I think it's so important when we talk about that, that inclusive culture allows people to really be, be feel, feel good to be able to bring their authentic self to work. So when you think about teams you've led, what are the conditions that you think that really helps um, to create that inclusive culture? And, and basically, like I think some fun, the foundation of that is really understanding your team, creating psychological safety, and understanding yourself. And you kind of talked about that, about your authentic self. How do you do that in the context of your team from day to day to really create that environment where people can come to work and be their best? Yeah. Um, so when I say, um, you know, I need to be my authentic self, there are some things that I have to work on that are yeah. counter to uh, yeah. my natural ability, which is yeah. uh, I need to listen more and talk less. Yeah. Um, I, I tend to be somebody who um, if I've got an idea, right, I want to I want to get it out there. I want to be I want to be talking about that. And I'm just so excited and passionate to do to do the work that I tend to just start talking sometimes. And in order to create that ability for everybody to be their authentic selves and to create inclusiveness within a team, I had to learn to um, not talk right away. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, It's one thing to, uh, you know, throw out ideas when you're a member of a team. But when you're the leader of the team and you say something first, you've set the tone or the idea or the opinion and people will generally follow that idea. It's harder for them to counter the leader's idea. So Mm -hmm. you've got to have this pause or I do anyway, this pause Mm -hmm. before um, putting my ideas out there in order to get the best ideas from the team. So that mm-hmm. that was something that I did have to learn. Um, and I try to do, I, I, I'm sure I fa- fail at it from time <laughs> to time. I'm sure yeah. my team would say I do. Um, but listening was was the biggest piece for me. That, I mean, that is such a key point, Jen. And where you started with is really where it starts, really understanding yourself. I don't think you mm-hmm. can really create that inclusive culture if you don't have a good understanding of yourself. None of us are perfect. We all have our things, our strengths and our opportunities. But knowing yourself really helps you be able to effectively lead. And I like how you frame that is like, hey, by creating that inclusive culture, there's more op- there's more open dialogue. Um, people feel welcome. And it, it really sure. uh, creates an environment where fair treatment happens. And I think that's so important when you think of inclusive cultures. So thank yes. you. Good example. Yeah. All right. Another question. As an executive sponsor for E3, how has your experience with inclusive leadership impacted your role in driving growth through the empowerment and advancement of women? And how does it inform your involvement in Ecolab's Executive DEI Council and Finance Talent Councils? So, so you're um, a leader in a lot of different ways, Jen. I, <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> how like do you navigate things, that stuff? <laughs> I like to do things beyond my day job uh, <laughs> for, for whatever reason. I don't know. It, it gives me energy. Um, you know, it's the, the secret about inclusive leadership, I think, you know, and when I think about it in terms of specifically my E3 sponsorship role, yep. is that it makes life incredibly easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason I say that is because if you're an inclusive leader, kind of going back to, um, you know, talking about listening and things like that, if you're an inclusive leader, you will get the absolute best ideas and best performance out of the teams. And the leaders of our ERGs are some of our most amazing um, emerging and current leaders in the organization. So sometimes for me, it's just sitting back and taking in all of their great ideas um, and Mm -hmm. being a cheerleader and an advocate for them and and clearing the path for them Mm -hmm. tends to be my job in that space. It's not me directing or coming up with ideas or things like that. It's it's listening, it's asking questions, and then it's clearing the road. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I've learned is um, as you work with people who are just so very talented in the organization, if you're an inclusive leader, you, you, honestly, you have better work-life balance because everybody is um, performing at their best um, mm-hmm. or it creates the environment for that to happen. Um, so I think it's just an incredible uh, technique uh, to be used in a leadership position, whether it's in your day job or whether it's something like being an executive sponsor for an ERG. Awesome. Yes. You know, as you're talking about that, it, it just reminds me all the impact E3 has made in our organization and your leadership and helping and supporting a partner means such a big piece of that. And as we're moving out of Black History Month and moving to Women's History Month and International Women's Day, what yeah. is those day? What is it? Um, um, Women's History Month and International Women's Day mean to you? And why is it important? that we recognize it. Yeah, you know, I love that 
you know, it's this thing that comes around on an annual basis because it allows me to take stock. Like, where were we a year ago? Where are we today? Where do we want to be? Um, you know, are we progressing in the right um, direction? Do I feel like we're making progress? Um, so I like this sort of annual scorecard um, and it's mm -hmm. qualitative for me, yeah. right? You know, how, do, how, does, how does it feel like we're progressing as an organization um, and, and we're making progress, but mm -hmm. I think we've got a journey yet to go. So that's what mm -hmm. I love about it is just this moment to step back, celebrate the successes that we've had so far and recognize that there's more work to do. So yeah. that's what I love about it. Good, good. And you know, the, the key thing about International Women's Day is it's truly international. How does it yeah. feel international at Ecolab? Because we celebrate it all across the world. But can you talk a little bit more about that from your perspective? Yeah, I, you know, it's fun um, to be on a platform like LinkedIn, for example, when mm -hmm. International Women's Day is happening, uh, because you just feel it from all parts of the globe. Um, mm -hmm. I'll see Ecolab women in uh, different countries across the world with, by the way, um, male counterparts, right, celebrating mm -hmm. the day. And you just get this sense of um, pride uh, in mm -hmm. our in our organization. And I think it's I think it's wonderful. Um, the other thing I would say is, yeah, in different parts of the world, it's got uh, more or less importance. Uh, last mm -hmm. year's International Women's Day, I was in um, Poland, actually, I had I was checking into my hotel on International Women's Day in Krakow, um, and there was a gentleman who handed me a flower and said, "Happy uh, International Women's Day!" and and it was like a holiday there, um, <laughs> which awesome. was so fantastic um, yeah. and so different for me. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it was it was lovely. I mean, any opportunity to celebrate people, um, you know, in different parts of the community is is you know worth it, right? Yes, absolutely. And Jen, I love how you mentioned like the male allies being there with it as well, because yeah. just like Black History Month, International Women's Day and, and Women's History Month, is we should all be celebrating. That's all a yes. part of all of us. And I think that's how we really create those inclusive cultures. And it's great to see how that's celebrated across the world. I love that story because uh, yeah. hopefully we'll get there here as well. It it's continues to be celebrated across too. Um, so another question I have um, yeah. is how do we share that we remain intentional in creating gender parity throughout our organization? And how do we make sure, given a lot of the things externally going on in the world, uh -huh. that we stay focused on the importance of gender parity and the importance of diversity, equity, inclusion here at Ecolab? Um, I, I think it comes down to allyship. I mean, yep. if if everyone were to be an ally, I mean, imagine what we can accomplish together, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which we've got really good at content on workday learning around allyship. Mm -hmm. um, and I would recommend anybody to take a look at that because being an ally isn't just about sort of accepting, right? And yeah. saying, yes, I I am I agree with this, let's do this, right? It's really about um, advocating, taking action, making it happen. Um, and so the allyship piece, I think, is the most important thing we can do to ensure that gender parity progress continues and that mm -hmm. not only does the parity continue, but the inclusion around that so that we're getting exactly. the best from our people. Um, and so I think the whole thing starts and stops with inclusive leadership. You have to have mm -hmm. it um, as people are onboarding so that they can feel that their voices can be heard. And to the extent people get into um, you know, parts of the organization where they don't feel a sense of belonging, we'll stop hearing that voice. So it, it has to start and stop all the way through with inclusive leadership. I 100% agree. And I think that is the path we're on as an organization. And I know you are a part of the Executive Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Council, and that's going to be more of a focus for us. What has it been like? Because you've been on it since the beginning or pretty close to the beginning on the, on the, on the Executive DEI Council. What has that journey been like and how does it feel knowing the impact you've made on the DEI Council and how that's really helped us continue our progress from a DEI perspective here at Ecolab. Yeah. Um, well, first, thank you for saying I'm having an impact. Um, yes. Sometimes you feel like such a small cog. Yeah. Um, it's such important work. Um, so I'm I'm really happy to be part of the DEI Council. Um, I think, you know, what I've learned is that we have a really good um, tone at the top um, mm -hmm. around um, authentic leadership, inclusion, um, promoting the goals that, of, of making sure that we have the best teams and the best people um, on those teams. And 
what I've also learned is that you you have to have that tone at the top. You yes. have to have executives who believe in that. Um, but also, it can't be the only thing um, mm -hmm. because all of our associates around the world, day to day, they're working with the team members directly around them. And so it's it's the authenticity and inclusion of 47,000 people, yes. um, not just the, the most senior leaders of the organization. You have to have both. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would come back to this idea of allyship um, and learning what it is to be an ally and finding people with whom you can have some pretty um, transparent conversations with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've had for the purpose of my own education, right? Just sitting down with people and saying, help me understand, um, is so important. And I think if you open yourself up to hearing different perspectives, um, people are willing to share, um, Absolutely. if that, if that environment is created and it just unlocks so much human potential across the organization and just a place where people can grow and develop personally and professionally. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think that alignment at the executive level is a foundational piece you have. Yes. And I think having these conversations talk about inclusive leadership and how that becomes a way of leading throughout the organization is the goal we're going to get there. And if we do that, we're going to really meet our goals, our aspirations we have to yeah. be where we want to be in 2030 as an organization. So, yep. Great. I can't, well, Jen, I can't wait to be here in 2030 to see it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's going to be a quicker than you think. Uh, That's right. Jen, I just wanted to thank you for the conversation. Um, your commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and creating that inclusive culture is so important for us here at Ecolab. And uh, appreciate all the work you've done and look forward to continue partnering with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for being a partner in this work. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Our next conversation will be with Jeff Bird, Senior Vice President of Global Safety, Health and Environment. And we'll be exploring the impact of mindful inclusion on enhancing psychological safety in diverse work environments.